The Touring Pi 2 is almost here and I managed to get my hands on an early prototype to test out. If you haven't heard of the Touring Pi, it's a compact ARM cluster that provides scalable computing on the edge. Computing on the edge with the Turing Pi makes it easier for developers and enthusiasts to run an ARM-based cluster as close to the network gateway as possible and not tucked away in some data center. The Turing Pi 2 comes with many improvements over the Turing Pi 1. This model ships with 32 gigs of RAM, a SATA 3 interface, Raspberry Pi Compute Module 4 support, as well as NVIDIA Jetson support. This means you can mix and match Raspberry Pis along with NVIDIA Jetson boards. This gives us a ton of flexibility to be able to run Raspberry Pis for a general computing workload and NVIDIA Jetsons for AI or ML workloads. There are so many use cases for a Turing Pi 2, too many to name, but some of the most common ones are self-hosting applications, learning about clustering and even Kubernetes. They're great for software developers to be able to run a cloud-native ARM Edge infrastructure or a build pipeline, a NAS or network attached storage, or really anything you can build on a Raspberry Pi or an NVIDIA Jetson times four. That's because this board can hold up to four nodes. So let's talk about the hardware of the Turing Pi 2. This is the Turing Pi 2. It's a mini ITX standard and it can hold up to four nodes. It has a managed switch and VLAN support. It also supports HDMI. It has two SATA 3 6 gigabit ports, and it has two 1 gigabit ethernet ports. It also has four USB 3.0 ports, and two are accessible from the back, and two are accessible from this header. It also has a 40 pin GPIO. It's accessible right here on the board. And if you didn't catch it, this board has a 24 pin ATX power connector, so you can power it with any standard PC power supply. Now that's huge because this is a standard mini ITX board with a standard 24 pin power adapter. This means we could put this inside of a PC case and use a PC power supply to power this. And as I mentioned, it also has NVIDIA Jetson support. Yes, NVIDIA Jetson support. So now your compact Pi cluster can handle general compute with Pi 4s and machine learning and other CUDA and GPU tasks with this NVIDIA Jetson all on the edge. So this means you can mix and match NVIDIA Jetson boards along with Raspberry Pi compute boards. So how does that work, you ask? The Turing Pi 2 comes equipped with four slots that are compatible with NVIDIA Jetsons. However, Raspberry Pi 4 compute modules will not fit. That is, without an adapter. Included with my kit were three TPI CM4 adapters that allow me to connect my compute modules and then connect them to my Turing Pi. This gives them a common interface to connect to the Turing Pi 2. So let's disconnect this NVIDIA Jetson from this developer kit board. And you can see this board looks exactly like one of these adapters. So now let's put this NVIDIA Jetson into our Turing Pi, into the first port. Now, the reason why I'm putting it into this first port is because this first port has access to the HDMI. So I'm gonna use this one for video output. And that's something you'll have to consider with the Turing Pi 2, is that some of these nodes have access to some of these devices. And so you might have to mix and match and shuffle them around and look at the spec sheet to see which node has access to which device. But we'll talk about some of that here in a few. So now let's get a Raspberry Pi 4 compute modules ready. This is the Raspberry Pi CM4 Lite R13. And this thing is tiny. For comparison, this is a micro SD card. As you might be able to tell, these aren't so dim anymore, so they won't fit into here as we talked about. That's why you need these adapters now. And so this Pi should snap right into this adapter. And then we can slide this adapter into the Turing Pi. So let's do that. Two more times. And there we go. So this model doesn't have any embedded storage on them. Let me pop one of these out. These don't have any embedded storage on them. So then I can actually add storage from this micro SD slot here. So I'm equipping each one of these with the 64 gig Samsung Evo micro SD. These are super fast for micro SD. They're U3s, class 10 rated for transfer speeds up to 130 megabytes. So pretty decent for a micro SD. And for this NVIDIA Jetson, 
I'm doing the same thing for now, but this has 128 gig. Now, I might swap this out later for an SSD, but this is what it's going to be for now. And this should be fine to boot up and run an operating system. So let's put this back in here. And then, before we put these back in, I'm probably going to add some cooling to this. See, I have a heatsink here already. I should probably add a heatsink to these, because most likely these are going to be running Kubernetes or some other workload that will get these SOCs pretty hot. And speaking of these SOCs or system on a chip, these are ARM Cortex A72. So it's the ARM V8 and they're a 64 bit SOC clocked at 1.5 gigahertz. So let's get a heat sink on here. So for these, I'm going to attach this little heat spreader that will help keep all of these chips cool. So let's pop this back off for now. Oof, there's one. Let's get the thermal tape on here. There's two. These little guys take a little bit longer than you think. Hope it's worth it. And there is three. Okay, so let's get these now back in the board. So I'll be running Kubernetes, so these will be running pretty warm. And this is a nice way to remove some heat, uh, just so that we don't get throttled. And so hopefully these aluminum alloy heat sinks will keep them cool. So you might notice that mine's actually missing a battery. So I'm going to pop a battery in here. This is a CR2032 battery. Pretty typical of boards. And I think it goes this way. Okay, so battery is in. And here's my little board so far. It's looking pretty, pretty good. So you might be asking what I'm going to put this board in, what type of case, and it's a mini ITX case. And as you know, I have a server rack in the basement for my home lab. And so I picked up a 2U case for this to put it in. And so this is a Rosewell 2U server chassis case. This case can support up to five hard drives and two fans. So this case can carry one five and a quarter inch drive and four 3.5 or four 2.5 hard drives. And for cooling, it has two 80 millimeter fans up front. And as you can see here, it has four expansion slots if you need them. And it also has all of your connectors for USB, power, power switch, reset, and all of your front panel headers. And it fits standard micro ATX and even mini ITX boards. That's one of the reasons why I went with this 2U case. Now, I would have loved if this would have fit inside of a 1U case, but there's not enough clearance here with the way that these cards fit. So 2U is going to be the smallest case if you're thinking about rack mounting this. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. So let's get a Turing Pi mounted inside of this rack mount case. And one call out really quick that this is actually a great case for any PC conversion. I talk about PC conversions a lot and converting them into rack mount chassis cases, but this is a great one. And so if you're looking for a 2U to convert an old PC to, you could use this too. But this is actually perfect for my Turing Pi 2. So let's get a Turing Pi 2 mounted inside of this case. Okay, that was super easy. And for now, I'm just gonna tuck all of these wires away. Just wanna get it powered on first and make sure it's gonna work. So next, you're probably asking about the power supply. Remember, it has a 24 pin ATX power supply, which means we can power it from your typical PC power supply. So I picked up this, so this might be overkill, but hear me out. 
So I picked up this, it's an EVGA 550 watt gold power supply. Now I know that this is more power than what I would need for this Raspberry Pi, but a couple of things. One, it was on sale, so I got a really good deal on it, and I paid less than what I would pay for a 350 watt. Two, it's a pretty good brand, and three, it's gold rated, so it's pretty efficient. And four, it's modular. So let's open this up. And as I mentioned, it's modular. I wanted modular so I didn't have a bunch of cables running around, but really, I'm only gonna run this motherboard cable from here to the board. So now, interesting. So does the fan go up or down? I think it's going to go up. I haven't run into this actually. All of my other power supplies, it was really obvious uh, because if I were to point the fan down, it would take in the cool air and exhaust it out here, but I don't have ventilation down here or standoffs or anything. So I'm gonna go with a fan up. Because otherwise it seems like it would suffocate, but I don't know. If I'm wrong, let me know, but I'm sure you will, even if I don't ask. <laughs> but I appreciate that feedback. So now let's get this PSU in here mounted. Actually, after saying that, I realized that either way, this fan might be suffocated, but we'll see. Seems like I have a little more clearance up here than I do below it, but we'll see. Okay, so let's connect our one cable. The whole reason why I got a modular power supply is so that I didn't have to run or manage many cables. So this should go to the motherboard. And this should go to the power supply. There we go. And like I mentioned, I'm gonna hold off on connecting these. This is the power switch and reset, but actually there's a way to power it on currently on the Turing Pi 2. It has a hardware button, so I'm gonna use that instead for now. And not gonna connect any of the headers for hard drive light power, LED, NIC, because uh, I'm not sure where they connect yet, and I don't really need that at the time. But I definitely want some linking lights up front, so I'll figure that out. Let's connect our power to it. Okay, power supply now is power. Touring Pi now is power. That's a good sign. One's powering on, two's powering on, three's powering on. Nice! Now that I know it boots up fine, I'm gonna disconnect power and network really quick. And I need to get these fans hooked up. These fans are up here and they have a Molex connector and they're tucked in there really tight, but I had the idea of just swapping these out for some of my favorite fans. So these are the Noctua Redux fans, 80 millimeter fans. I'm just gonna swap these out and put those in instead. Should be a little bit quieter and give me a little bit better airflow. But this fan now should go right up here. So let's take it apart. Okay, here we go. Now I can get to these fans. Swap these fans out. I always love screwing in these screws right here into case fans. I don't know why. Just always snug fit. It's one. And here is the other. Okay, let's feed this back through here. Let's get these screws mounted underneath first. Okay, so now I've gotten it back together with the new fans in. I'll tuck this under here. And now I can connect this four pin to the system fan on the motherboard. The problem is it only has one. Well, it's not a problem, but it is for me because now I have two. So I'll have to get a splitter, but let's make sure each fan is now working. Powered on. So interesting, the fans are turning. And I've tried both. So 
So that might be something I'm going to have to troubleshoot later. Or I go back to these fans with a Molex pin and then run power from the power supply to it. Or the splitter that I get, I can split off these from a Molex to two of these, but lots of options. So let's seal this back up, but before we do, let's take this peel off. Tell this one's kind of going to be a tough one. Okay, that was like the most annoying peel ever because it all peeled off in little strands like this. So I'll save you the, the hassle of watching that. Oh, and of course, I forgot a piece. There we go. So this should fit right back in here. And I will peel off the sides later. As you can see here, this is going to be a nice rack mount Touring Pi 2 server build. And I've got big plans for this NVIDIA Jetson and for these Raspberry Pis. And I really hate to do this, but this would be a long video if I went through the hardware build as well as the software build. In my next Touring Pi video, we'll walk through getting my cluster up and running with these three Raspberry Pi 4 compute modules, as well as an NVIDIA Jetson. So be sure you're subscribed to see how that turns out. And remember, if you found anything in this video helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. The IT world and the sysadmins are super busy right now. Developers are busy, network engineers are busy, sysadmins are busy, everyone's busy because um, there's a lot of patching going on and a lot of, uh, uh, a lot of reconsideration about uh, maybe tools that they're using, um, but this isn't unique. Uh, this isn't the first time and it will not be the last time. <laughs> it will not be the last time, that's for sure. And you know, something else uh, within a day or two or a week or a month will probably, you know, overshadow this one. It's, it's gonna be how it is for a long time.